selling your home is like a beauty pageant. It's like finding a mate. You got to look at yourself naked in the mirror and assess your real <laughs> self. Okay. <laughs> What we decided to talk about today was what makes a property sell fast because right. our clients pay us to help them sell their property quickly. Because once you've made a decision to sell, you want it to sell on the first, second, or third day, ideally. I sort of put it down to five key things and we'll talk about each of them. Right price, oh, that's number one. Right condition, the right amount of staging, the right information gathered ahead of time, and the right marketing strategy. The most difficult one is right price. Do we want to just get the elephant in the room out well, there on the table? Nothing. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you have the Taj Mahal. If the wrong price is on it, it's not going to sell. They'll say it's a lovely property. I really want it, but it's the wrong price. And whether somebody has all the money in the world and they're going to own it for 20 years and doesn't matter if they overpay, there's still a point where the right price, you know, is not going to prevail. And the other thing we hear from our sellers is, oh, they can throw me an offer. Well, the facts are the facts. It may have been in the old days that people would throw an offer, but today homes are selling for 97, 98% of list price. And I was sitting down with the seller this weekend, actually discussing this very topic. And they're like, well, why won't they just throw a number? And I explained to them that, you know what? Look at it this way. I've got a buyer. My buyer has been pre-approved, can only afford to spend $750,000. Why would I show them properties for $850,000? only for them to fall in love with something and say they can't afford it, so therefore they're just gonna continue renting. That makes no sense, right? So what do I do? I show them properties in the 750, maybe up to 800,000, but not over 800,000. So the guy that priced his $750,000 condo at 850, he's not getting showings from me. That's part of the reason why people are only gonna look within their lane, so to speak. And so the property has to be priced in its lane. Absolutely. And to pile on, if you price it for where it's going to sell, people will see it and it will compare favorably with other right. properties at that price. Mm -hmm. And then somebody will be excited. The, the point is when you, when you come in at the right price, you get enthusiasm, you get activity, you get traffic. And then from traffic, and you get trust. You, well, you get, oh, well, absolutely. You also get offers. So price it right the first time. Okay. All right. Let, wait, wait. The final comment we cannot leave without saying this is if you're priced right, you'll sell closer to list price and you'll sell oh, quicker. Yeah. So again, sellers, sellers, sellers. We're not saying this for our benefit. We're saying it for yours. You'll sell faster and get a higher price if you just do it right the first time. Agreed. Um, what does right condition mean, Anne? What's your view of right condition? Selling your home is like a beauty pageant. It's like finding a mate. You got to look at yourself naked in the mirror and assess your real <laughs> self. Okay. The best parts you got to highlight, right? You got gorgeous eyes, highlight your eyes. You got a fat butt. We're <laughs> a line like I do. Okay. What can't be fixed needs to be fixed. So in other words, you got a rickety handrail, tighten it up. You got a broken this, you got a broken that, fix her up. If you've got a flaw in your floor plan, you got to take care of it. And to your point, I think sometimes sellers don't realize that there will be an inspection by the buyer afterwards. And most inspectors um, tell you what's going on. Some inspectors set buyer's hair on fire. They will take a rickety handrail as a multi-million dollar lawsuit about to happen. And this house, you cannot live in the house with this handrail. So do right. all these Good. things so that you don't have a deal fall apart because of the buyer's inspection, which finds all the things that you neglected to do. And for God's sakes, you didn't need to do. You need to do them. So right. your, your person's terrific.
What does right staging mean? All right. Can I share some pictures with you? Because I want to. Yes. Okay. So I was approached by a um, client who had had their home on the market for a year, had not sold, and was beside themselves, didn't know what to do. So I came in and helped them. And I want to walk you through what happened. Mm. Okay. It's pretty, right? Is this before or after? Well, this is before, but... Pretty. It is pretty. This is her furniture. But what she did was she moved her furniture out. She moved to Evanston and the real estate agent said, oh, it's okay that it's vacant. So that's what it looked like when you came in. Hard to imagine what's going on. Hard to see. I brought in Lori Lehman and we staged it. See? Whole different look. Possibilities. This is what it looked like when she lived there. And you can Uh see her rug plays up the green around here, right? Uh She had foil freeze, which looked fine with her stuff. But as soon as it went vacant, this is what you got. Yeah. See that? So, um, blah, again. And you're saying to yourself, how do I reconcile this vintage fireplace with this contemporary freeze, right? Right. But look what happens when we stage it. It all comes together. See? Did you did you dumb down the freeze, or d- is the freeze still we there? We painted it. No, we painted it. Good. We, we took that out. So yes, exactly. A little painting, and painting's the best way to bring your property back. Okay, here's the yeah. den area off the kitchen. Cute with her mm-hmm. furniture, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it looked like without yeah. anything, and it was just looks like nothing. Oh, darling. Isn't that cute? Then the master. Oh, look at this. This was cute again with her stuff in it. And it had the spearmint green walls and whatever. And this is what it looked like when we staged it. Did you change the walls or is that the same wall? Same wall. Okay. Better. But, But here's the thing too. Oh, you can't see it in this photograph. But she had... This on the right was kind of this honey colored oak color and it didn't work. So we painted it the same color as the doors that were and the trim that was already there. That looks great. Basement. Mm -hmm. Lower level, as we call it with her stuff. Here it is staged. Darling. Yeah. So here's what happened. She was on the market for a year. We staged it, did some painting, kept it at the same price. It sold within a week for close to list price. (laughs) Yeah. That's staging. That is staging. Um, so let's say you want to keep the stuff that you have because you're living in it and you, you, you can't afford to stage it. Um, you have to stage it with the stuff that you have. And the most important thing, and the one that I get a lot of, I sometimes get pushback and I sometimes do not. Clean out your closets. 90 days worth of clothes. Um, one season worth of stuff, get the rest out of there. You pay for it because people think either there's not enough storage or the closet doors don't open well because they're jammed with stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, It just, and then people don't, you know, you'd like to be able to say that you're moving out because there's so much room and you're, and you're downsizing. That's the word. No one's going to buy it when you've got all this stuff. That's part of the staging staging of the of the closet stuff your your staging is absolutely beautiful and it was exactly the right thing to do and you actually made the property look better than when it was with their stuff because it showed what the next generation stuff might look like in that house exactly right and shout out to Lori layman and her group because they did a fabulous job but you bring up an excellent point here too which is you don't have to take all your things out and put in staging stuff there are things and you do it i do it i work directly with my sellers sometimes and go through the house just me we don't hire a stager and we talk about just how we can rearrange some things how we can you know, it's like camouflaging the big hips wearing the A-line dress. You, <laughs> you, know, you, you show off the stuff. Um, if you have a, a wild collection of something, people will look at that and not at the beautiful woodwork, you know? Yeah. So um, I think you, your point about the closets is spot on. I'm going to do br- briefly because this isn't really fun. Get the information. 
The information is all the, men, all the servicing of the building. If it's a house, when you last put on a roof, when you last did something to the siding, when you last did something to every inch of the I'm exterior you, is, and interior. Oh, I'm going to pound my fist. This is, <laughs> this is ignored by a lot of our colleagues, and it's critical. So that when you go on a showing, if, if, if the hot water heater is new, if the roof is new as of five years ago, that's big stuff that we want to share because it adds value. Also, details about what the counter is, what the cabinets are. You know, maybe they're Snedero cabinets or they're DiGiulio cabinets. I mean, that's got value, right? If you think you're gonna sell in 10 years, start pulling this information and maintain it on a spreadsheet so that you can share it. Because it, to your point, it adds value. Yep. And it's okay. easy to maintain once you move in because here are all the things that have been done. Here are the yeah. service providers to call that are familiar with the home. If you're in a condo building, sometimes these managers make you pay money to get the condominium declarations and the 22.1 and all that stuff. And sellers will say, well, I don't want to pay for that because I want to wait till I have a buyer. Wrong, wrong, wrong. First of all, it's wrong that they're holding this over your head, but really important that we have all the information like, what's the percent owner occupancy? Are there any lawsuits against the building? Um, you know, what capital improvements have been made? What's the budget? What's the reserve? Everybody walking into a building wants to know what the reserves are. As a listing agent, we need to have that information. And sometimes we don't unless the seller goes ahead and takes the step. I'm going to sell. I'm going to pay for my documents now. It's good for six months, so let's just move forward. So good, good point. Thank you, Anne. All right. Right marketing strategy. Yes. Listen, if your home is going to need to be gutted, I've got a property that's about to come on the market um, that's going to need complete um, rework by the next owner. I'm not going to market it as move right in. Mm -hmm. It's not move right in. I'm not gonna insult anybody. I'm gonna price it accordingly because that's what my, my seller wants. And we're going to be perfectly frank that this is a property that they're going to need to redo. Why frustrate yourself? Market it for what it is because then you will get the buyer who's ultimately going to buy it. What, what's your view on the right marketing strategy, Anne? No, I think that's exactly right. Know who your buyer is, know who you're going after. Um, and sometimes that's more than one type of buyer. Um, based on your neighborhood, it might be an area in a great school district, but that doesn't mean that you wouldn't necessarily have other buyers other than families. And with marketing strategy too, I want to include a couple other things in that. With marketing, you have to be able to show the property. Sellers make your home available on short notice. If uh, we can't show it, we can't sell it. Um, I would also say, uh, I like telling a story. And so I, I always ask my sellers, what is it you've loved about living in this neighborhood? What have you loved about this home? What made it very special for you? Because chances are that's going to be special for the next person. So those are all important things to keep in mind. 